Welcome back to another video on the channel today. Today we're back with the 21 videos in 21 days. Today we've got a sort of an interesting topic. We're going to be talking about four players that I think will leave Rexham AFC this season, whether it be in the January transfer window or whether it be at the end of the season. We've got four players that we're going to be talking about. But before we get going in today's video, make sure to get down there and click the red subscribe button. We're on the road to 20k. That's the goal that we are trying to hit for the end of 2023. So any support of course, is massively, massively appreciated. And let me know before we get going in today's video, before I talk about any of these players, let me know in the comment section down below one player that you think will leave Wrexham AFC at the end of the season. And of course, let's get talking about the first player, which is Callum McFadzi. Now, I think it's fair to say it's not been a great past few months for McFadzi. You know, Parky had to make that really tough decision before the League 2 season did start. Obviously, I think he had to leave three players out in our squad that were not going to feature at all this season and of course McFadzim was one of those and I think for McFadzim we could see an earlier exit than what some people may expect of course McFadzim out of contract June 2024 as it stands we're obviously in December 2023 I get talking about what I think could possibly happen to McFadzim but either way I think we're sort of expecting McFadzim to exit Rex AFC because if I'm being honest, I cannot see the club or Phil Parkinson offering him a new contract when his does run out in 2024. And a bit about McFadden, of course, you know, he signed on the 27th of January 2022. And since then, he went on to play 43 league games for Wrexham. In his first season, you know, he joined in January and I thought he had a good impact on the team. I think he played 16 games that season. He had a good impact on the team, settled in well, put some good performances in that left back slot and then of course the following season of course we missed out on promotion we lost to Grimsby and then the following year Parkinson did decide to bring in another left back in of course Jacob Mendy and I think that could have been an early sign that McFadden wasn't going to be our regular starting left back and maybe Phil Parkinson wasn't happy with the performances that McFadden had been put in in the previous season but of course Phil Parkinson felt the need to go out for another left back he brought in Jacob Mendy in that season and over the course of the 22-23 promotion season Season. he played 27 games but his last league start did actually come on the 2nd of January 2023 away at Solihull Moor so in those 27 games you know he only started a handful of those and he was mostly used as a substitute player and then obviously fast forward to this season Phil Parkinson went out his way again to get another left wing back in James McLean and I think this is when we sort of knew McFadden was not going to play a part this season, which was then followed by Phil Parkinson making that squad list decision to not include Callum McFadden in our squad list for the upcoming season. With McFadden not being in our squad and obviously not being allowed to play in the EFL League 2 fixtures, these rules don't apply for the Carabao Cup EFL trophy. And I'm not sure about the FA Cup, but out of a possible five games, McFadden only played two of those. Wigan in the Carabao Cup and Newcastle under 21's our first group stage game in the Papa John's Trophy and I thought you know he might have played three out of three you know it was a good chance for those players that weren't involved in the squad to come into the team just keep up their match fitness and keep in sharp because you know you never know what could happen they could be set for a low move away they want to keep sharp but it's just a weird situation with Callum McFadden because you know to only feature once and then not be featuring at all in the next two games and of course in the Carabao Cup it was just a bit strange and I don't really know the ins and outs of the situation at the minute with McFadden but what we can gather is if he's not playing in the EFL trophy then he might not ever feature in a Rex AFC shirt again and of course it's disappointing to lose a player in this way you know you don't really want to see a Wrexham player not feature at all but it is part and parcel of going up the leagues you know the project that Rex AFC are on at the minute we're wanting to get players in that are going to play a big role in the future and of course McFadden did play a role in our promotion back to the EFL and he was one of those players that was willing to take that risk to step down a division to come and sign for Wrexham and in my opinion it paid off for him of course he got that promotion he's got 43 league games under his belt for Wrexham and if this is the end of the journey you know McFadden okay he definitely divides people's opinions some people like him some people don't but you can't fault his service for the club of course like I said 43 games he was willing to say that's step down and he did what he needed to do and we can only thank him for that and if we're planning on going up to league one this season then we can't really be splashing the cash on players wages like McFadden who are not going to make the squad and who are not going to even feature in the likes of the Papa John's Carabao Cup so it would be pointless in my opinion to see McFadden extend his contract or for Wrexham to keep McFadden on 
if he's not even going to feature in any games at all. It would just be wasting money unless McFadden can somehow turn it around. But of course, I highly doubt that. We've only got a select few EFL Trophy games left and we're out of the Carabao Cup. And if it applies for FA Cup, then we're probably only limited to the fifth round of the FA Cup. So if he is going to do anything, he needs to do it in spectacular fashion. Disappointing situation, but in my opinion, McFadden could be a useful asset for National League clubs and of course, a select few League Two clubs. So if McFadden wants to remain active over this spell a low move could definitely be beneficial towards him he could keep up his match fitness and of course it'd be a realistic option to loan McFadden out in January but if we're talking about a permanent transfer in January I cannot see this happening because we know it McFadden our contract June 2024 I wouldn't say any club is willing to go out their way and pay for McFadden you know with him only having six months left on his contract so the only real solution in this is that McFadden does get that loan move out maybe to a National League club maybe to a League Two club we don't know and the next player we're going to be talking about is Billy Waters our striker that we signed from Barrow earlier on last season now a loan move away would be very very beneficial we were signing him off the back of a very good season in League 2 for Barrow and to think you know, the goals he was scoring for Baron League 2, he's come to Wrexham. You know, we all expected him to be a good player and play a big role in our squad, but he's done the complete opposite. He's not scored for Wrexham, and of course, he's not included in our League 2 squad list. The reason why I think this will be beneficial to Billy Waters is because, you know, it's going to keep him motivated. It can't be good for a player of Billy Waters' quality. You know, he's scored goals wherever he's gone. He knows that he's got that quality to be training and then obviously not be playing on the weekend. A loan spell could do wonders for Billy Waters' confidence because I think it's fair to say his confidence was low. Whenever he watched him, he didn't really seem like he had a bag of confidence. And this is where a loan move could come really, really handy. And I think a loan move is 85% going to happen in January. If he does secure a loan move in January, it will obviously give him a chance to prove himself to Phil Parkinson because his string of games for Wrexham AFC, let's be honest, he wasn't the greatest, but we know the quality is there. We've seen it for Halifax, we've seen it for Barrow, and he needs to show Parkinson that he still can play a big role in this squad. And the only way that he's really going to do that is if he does gain a loan move away. In my opinion, we could be looking at a National League club, we could be looking at a League 2 club. I'm sure Barrow wouldn't mind getting him back on a loan move and I'm sure a couple of other League 2 clubs wouldn't mind having his services on loan. But what we need to guarantee for Billy Waters in January is for him to go somewhere, get game time, get his confidence up, maybe score a few goals, come back to Wrexham because of course we know he's on a slightly longer contract than some of the other players in this list. But we need to get him scoring goals, come back to Wrexham in the summer full of confidence and you know, let's just hope he can prove himself. I'm sure we didn't pay a small fee for Billy Waters, so let's hope he can come back, redeem himself. And it's clear to see that Billy Waters is a good player. Like I said, he's had spells elsewhere where he has scored goals, but at Wrexham, he struggled to adapt to our style of play and he just hasn't been up to it. He has not been up to it. And for me, he's been far from a starting striker and far from a striker that, you know, would do a solid job in our starting 11. So let's just hope he does get that low move away to hopefully a League Two club. I'd be very happy if we saw him gaining his confidence back at a team in our league. And of course, in my opinion, he's wasted not getting game time. You know, he's got the quality and it's disappointing to see a player of Billy Waters' quality training in the week and then only being available to play in the EFL trophy. It must be quite demotivating for him, but... You know, he seems to be a good character in the squad and if he's willing to get that loan move out, I think we should definitely go ahead with it. Right, the next player we're going to be talking about technically isn't leaving Wrexham, it's Arthur Oconquo. Technically, he is leaving Wrexham because he's obviously on loan until the end of the year, but if Arthur Oconquo does continue to put in these string of performances like he has done all season, there is a very, very high chance that we will not sign him on a permanent at the end of the season because obviously his contract runs out at Arsenal 2024. Fabrizio Romano did actually tweet before he signed for Wrexham AFC that host of European clubs and English clubs were looking at Arthur Oconquo and of course that's before his time at Wrexham AFC. He's only got better since signing for us and that will increase the demand to sign Arthur Oconquo. I'm sure there'll be a whole host of clubs at the end of his contract that will be straight on it offering his services to their club. It is going to be a massive, massive deal if we are able to get it across the line. He's been playing fantastic for us and I think he's definitely capable of playing at a much higher level. It's just a question is, is he willing to tie his future down at Wrexham AFC? And one of the factors that is going to play a huge role in this is of course, if we get promoted to League One this season. Now, if we don't get promoted to League One, then I think we can sort of understand that Arthur Oconquo is obviously going to go elsewhere. There'll be a whole host of championship clubs. We can guarantee that. 
that they will be looking at signing Arthur Oconco and it'll be a massive, massive blow if we don't get promoted this year. Of course, at an age that Arthur Oconco is, he's very young, playing in the Championship in League One is going to do wonders. It's going to increase his confidence and, of course, be very beneficial for his long-term career ahead. Of course, as well, if you're looking ahead at Arthur Oconco, is he looking to get into that England under-21s team? The form he's on at the minute and if he does get that move to the Championship next season and, you know, perform there very well, then there is a chance he could get into the England under 21 squad but if he decides to sign for Wrexham and you know we're in League 2 if somehow that happens then of course there will be that slight decrease in chance of getting in that England under 21 squad but you know if he gets his move to the Championship Club he'll be looking at things like that of course he'll be playing in a much higher quality league he'll have more chance of getting in that national squad for England under 21s I think the best case scenario in this situation for Arthur Oconco is Wrexham get promoted Oconco has loved his time here he's passionate about the project that is going on wants to be a part of it and believe that Wrexham is the club for him to develop as a player. It would be a big move for Oconco to drop down from Arsenal, you know, where he's been fourth choice keeper. He's gained a lot of experience from playing alongside, you know, Aaron Ramsdale. He's been involved in some of the best players in the world in the Arsenal squad. He's gone on pre-season tours with them. So he's obviously gained a lot of experience and of course they know where Arthur Oconco stands. They know the quality and the league that he can play at and they know the level he's at. Of course, Arsenal will be advising him on where to go with the end of his contract like any other club would do. They'll want to guide him in the right direction and that's of course if Arsenal don't offer him a new contract but like I said best case scenario Wrexham get promoted he wants to come back we time down for three to four years happy days we've got an incredible keeper on our hands but it's going to take a lot to get Arthur Conco to re-sign at the end of the year again one of the other solutions to this is we put a massive massive bid in in January now I think we'll have that priority if we do want to get him in on a permanent in January now let's not kid ourselves there'll be a lot of European clubs a lot of EFL clubs looking at Arthur Conco in the summer so if we could somehow get him on a permanent it's very very unlikely we'll probably see his loan move out until the end of the year and assess the options come the end of the season and obviously when his loan does expire but yeah I just thought I'd want to touch upon Arthur Conco's situation and the final player we're going to be talking about is Liam McAlinden now with McAlinden's contract running up at the end of the season and obviously if we don't go up I can't see us offering McAlinden a new contract don't get me wrong McAlinden's been a good player to have you know for the cup competitions he's played a massive part in the National League as well his super sub antics when he did come on he'd often save the game for us in that string of games in like January 2020 but you know he's been a good player to have in and around the squad he's offered that depth of course you know if we've got injuries in left wing back right wing back McAlinden would slot into that position with no issue at all I think he's been really really good in the situations that he's been put in but if we're looking at regular first team football let's be honest it's not going to happen for McAlinden anytime soon and of course when he signed the new contract Parkinson said that he was a good player to have in the cup competitions and obviously to provide that depth and I don't think anything will have changed by the time his contract does run out at the end of the season so we're probably not looking at extending McAlinden's contract unless Parkinson wants to go out and give him another one year extension he was good in the National League he made those impact subs he'd have no issue in slotting in on either wing back side but there's a big quality gap. There's a big, big quality gap between League Two and the National League. If McAlinden was required to start in the National League, of course, he put a solid performance in. But League Two is a much, much higher quality league. And, you know, I can't see McAlinden being a regular at left wing back or right wing back. And, of course, there's two to three players ahead of him in those certain positions that he does play. So a move away could be beneficial for his career. If he's looking for regular game time, then... I definitely think a move away could be the best option for Liam McAlinden. But if McAlinden's more than happy to stay on a Wrexham AFC to obviously provide the cover at the wing back spot and you know just be utilised as a cup player, then I'd be more than happy for that. I think he does a solid job whenever he plays in the cup competitions. I think Phil Parkinson will have a long think over the summer what his situation is going to be. Will he offer him a new contract? I think a lot of Wrexham fans are expecting him not to extend his stay here, which I think is definitely realistic to think that, but we can't assume anything. It's down to the gaffer Phil Parkinson. Parkinson at the end of the day and yeah that is four players that unfortunately I believe will be leaving Wrexham AFC this season or in the summer so let me know in the comment section down below let me know one player you think is going to leave Wrexham and of course I'll see you in another video take care guys and let me know what you think of this backdrop as well we're in the Christmas mood we've got the Christmas tree up this is being recorded on the 1st of December the first video in December so we're getting in that Christmas mood and I'll see you in another video take care guys up the town